I was exhilarated by the new realization that I could change the character of my life by changing my beliefs. I was instantly energized because I realized that there was a science-based based path that would take me from my job as a perennial victim to my new position as co-creator of my destiny. Dr. Bruce Lipton from the book, The Biology of Belief. I'm Stephen Middleton, coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include, I am, I can, and I will. I am Possibility Man. Today, I want to share on the theme, the neurology of power. But first, a reminder, if you have not traveled over to YouTube, I invite you to do so today. Like my YouTube channel, share, share it, and subscribe. Ask your friends to do the same. And if you are viewing this video on Facebook, like, share, and comment. Let's see what we can create together on the World Wide Web today. Now back to my share the neurology of power. Someone asked me when they saw that I would be sharing on this topic, what the heck is this about? Why are you doing this? Well, I answered by saying the subject came to me. The neurology of power came to me. I didn't know it was a subject of investigation until later, and I noticed that there are people talking about the neurology of power, people writing about the neurology of power, and there's some academics writing books about neurology of mind. But here's the simple thing that I want to share and remind you of, because you already know this, we are powerful beings. We just are. You know, our cells receive and process information naturally. We don't have to make that happen. It just happens. Our genes are not determinative of our life outcomes. They're just not. We can actually bend our genes or change our genes. Our DNA doesn't control our destiny either. If there's one power that's a guide to us in this life, it is our thinking. Our thoughts lead the way in our creation. And that's why I am doing the share on the neurology of power. Now, I don't want to be scatterbrained as I talk to you today, so I made a couple of notes to keep me on track. The first thing that I want to note is that we live in an intelligent environment. Now, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. That we live in an intelligent space, an intelligent uh, environment. Our surroundings are intelligence or have intelligence in them. No, no matter where we are on the planet. Now, I live in the United States on the East Coast and in the southern part of this country. And where I live in South Carolina today, evidence of spring has already started. As I look outside my window, I can see that the grass is beginning to turn green. I can hear the birds chirping in my backyard. I can even see some squirrels hopping around in the trees. It's clear that we live in an intelligent world. And this intelligence is not merely biologic. Uh, this intelligence 
is also spiritual. And we'll get more into that in a moment. Not only do we live in an intelligent environment, we are intelligent beings. We just are. There's nothing that we have to do to make it happen. And there's nothing that we can do to stop it from happening. You know, we are organic and biological beings. You know, our skin, for example, is an or organic. It's an organ. If you take a pin and puncture yourself, you're going to feel it. You know, our heart, our uh, brain, our lungs, and other organs of the body are all indications that we are biological. We are organic. That's a part of us. Our being, our carriage, this bio biologic being can also carry electrical static. Have you ever shocked yourself by touching an object? Because it's simply a matter that your body is transporting atoms and can cause electrical static. Now, the scientists, especially the academics, who talk about the neurology of mind and the neurology of the brain uh, understand this. They sometimes do not recognize the other part of what we are. And here it is. We are also spiritual. There's some things about the human being that will ultimately deteriorate and disappear. You know, you can see it over the decades on your faces, that, that there's a changing as you look at yourself. Sometimes health conditions may come up, which may change the course of your body. So the body is constantly in the process of change. But there's one thing that never changes, and that is our spiritual component, our spiritual self, our higher self. And this higher self, the spiritual self, is what is primary about who you are, about who we are. You know, we don't know this very well because we don't get a manual when we come into the world. I'm holding an iPhone in my hand. And whatever telephone that you have, just take a look at it. You know, when I got my iPhone, I got a manual that tells me about the operation of this phone. If you buy a car today, especially some of the sophisticated electrical cars that are on the market today, you will get a pretty big man manual. Now, the human being is more complicated than any of those things. An automobile, a car, or even an airplane. We're more complex. We're more sophisticated. But we do not come with a manual. There's nothing that exists on the planet today other than, of course, the natural qualities of our planet that a human being has not created. But yet, we do not have a manual. Now, there are some sacred texts that point the way, and you know them. If you belong to a spiritual community, you may have a stake sacred text that you look to. It points the way, no matter what spiritual community you belong to. And over the years, there have been sages and philosophers who point the way. In the 20th century, two of the individuals that I like a great deal are Sidney Banks and Neville Goddard. In their writings and in their talks, they point the way. And what they say reminds me then of this fact. We are witnesses to creation. Creation is constantly happening. And we are witnesses of that creation. And we, human beings, are creating. We are creators. We are outpicturing the images that come into our minds. We'll do more with this 
as they continue to stir around with the subject with you, but we want to conclude by looking at what some of these sages and writers and speakers say about this in the 20th century and also today. One is Esther Hicks. Esther Hicks is a brilliant speaker, a brilliant communicator, and she tells us in her talks that she just wants to feel good. And she encourages us to find ways to feel good. Because in the feeling good, we're creating more of that which we want. The 20th century philosopher Sidney Banks, who passed away in the 21st century, advises us to follow the feeling. That's what Esther Hicks said. I just want to feel good. Sidney Banks says, follow the feeling. And it's the good feeling that we follow that allows us to create more of that which we want. And then Neville Goddard, the 20th century philosopher, gives us a practice. Now, we don't need a practice, but I think that the practice offered by Neville Goddard is worth looking at. He says, do this exercise. Ask this question of yourself and ask this question of the universe. What would it be like? What would it feel like if I already had all of the skills that I need to practice in this particular profession? What would it feel like if I had all of the resources to allow me to do the many good things that I want to do in life. What would it feel like? And Neville Goddard advises us to ride that feeling, to ride it, to harness it, to explore it, to allow it to be with us. And in this then, we can only outpicture more and more of what we want. Look, you are an incredible being. I know that sometimes we live in a very negative world. I know that today we got Russia and Ukraine you know, at war. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of things are happening in our society. But I still say you are, we are more powerful than anything we can imagine. We'll be stirring around with the neurology of power as we go forward. But I want to remind you that this is Stephen Middleton coming to you from the Possibility Action Network. Our core values include I am, I can, I will, I am Possibility Man. I invite you to connect with us, drop a comment in a note. What do you think about the neurology of power? And let me know if you want us to continue sharing on this subject. Until next time, good day.